Good morning. My name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting the latest updates from SK Mining, which trades on the Toronto Venture Stock Exchange under the symbol ESK. Joining me today once again is SK's Vice President of Exploration, John Decker. John, thanks for stopping by to update us once again. How are you doing? I'm doing uh, great. Good to get a little break after being in the field for so long, but it, it's been um, a really fantastic uh, summer so far. So uh, thanks for having us back, Megan. Excellent. Yeah, you can give us an update for sure. So today, SK announced the commencement of drilling at Scarlet Valley, as well as the completion of the program at Scarlet Ridge. Could you run us through this release? Yeah, happily. Um, and now, first, we'll always start off with our disclaimer. Uh, we do have some forward-looking statements that will be mentioned uh, in, in this interview. So please do your due diligence uh, when considering investing. Um, start off again with a, an overview. Uh, we have our uh, Sky Tim map that I like to use. Um, because one of the things that we found after this season, uh, these Sky Tim anomalies really uh, do correspond to mineralization. So. Um, what we're going to focus on today is this Scarlet Ridge area. Um, and then we have Scarlet Valley, which uh, we just started drilling. And I will also talk about our Tarn Lake um, prospects down here. All of these things are quite close to each other. Um, you know, they're about a kilometer apart and forming uh, a roughly eight and a half kilometer trend of VMS mineralization. It's um, really a, quite a fantastic area. Um, as you can see with some of the photos we have in the press release, uh, this stuff's actually outcropping on the surface. And um, it's worth noting that uh, we are actually pretty close to the Eskate Creek mine. Uh, when we're actually at the drills in these areas, you can see Eskate Creek while we're um, at, this, uh, at these areas. So it's really quite phenomenal to see such good outcropping um, mineralization so close to a uh, world-class mine like SK Creek. Um, want to give a bit of an update. Uh, as of now, we're at 22,500 meters of uh, core drilled, making 75% of our 35,000 planned meters. Uh, with about four to six weeks to go in the program, we will easily hit 30,000 meters. And I'll, I'll talk about um, where we're going to be drilling more uh, later on. Um, and then we also bring up uh, this BLEG map. Uh, this is our BLEG survey from 2020. Um, I want to mention um, something that we noted in the press release. We've done some um, additional BLEG surveys, really trying to refine some of the uh, where the gold is in some of these drainage basins right here in the Scarlet Ridge, Scarlet Valley area, as well as up along the, uh, the northeastern part of our property. So we've gone out and subdivided these basins and um, that will allow us to really refine and focus our efforts um, for exploration next season. Because um, one thing people probably don't realize when looking at these maps is this area is a very rugged, difficult to explore terrain. Um, even though we're helicopter supported, getting dropped off by a helicopter may still involve two plus kilometers of hiking just to get to some of these areas that we're looking at. So, you know, it's a really rugged area, but it, it's a quite phenomenal area as well. Um, I'm going to be showing uh, some photos that were in the press release. Um, you know, some of our highlights that these photos are really trying to hit at is that we've intercepted quite a bit of sulfide mineralization, not only at uh, the Scarlet Valley target, uh, which we've just started drilling, and we're about five holes into that now, but at Scarlet Ridge as well. I mean, we're seeing some really, really interesting, intense alteration textures and mineralization. Um, we'll also discuss the fact that we're finding more and more uh, prospects that are uh, ready to drill, that are worth drilling. We're seeing quite a bit of sulfide mineralization on the surface. And as we've shown in the press release, we're seeing um, visible silver sulfo salts. So, you know, in addition to this handheld XRF data uh, that we um, mentioned, we're actually seeing visible signs of precious metal mineralization in this area. So that's really quite spectacular. You know, as um, we've mentioned in some of the previous interviews and releases, uh, we're keeping a lot of uh, focus on the TV Jeff area. However, um, given the um, 
intense mineralization and um, silver minerals that we're seeing at this uh, Scarlet um, Valley area and then Tarn Lake, which is actually kind of southwest off the lower left of this map. We've moved two drills out here to uh, try to drill this as much as we possibly can this season. Uh, what we're seeing is a, a quite extensive uh, feeder zone kind of cutting through this area. This drill hole is uh, going right through that feeder zone. Uh, but we also have um, additional mineralization outcropping uphill or to the east from this. So a lot of our other drill holes uh, that we're planning are going to be collared up in this area. And uh, we'll be drilling through this feeder zone and then testing uh, lateral extensions off of this because we're also seeing quite a bit of a uh, replacement style mineralization within a uh, favorable stratigraphy in this area. So we're getting a good um, idea of what we're actually dealing with here in this area um, in preparation for a much larger program uh, for 2023 because this area certainly warrants uh, much more exploration. It's the, the focus of our mapping team's effort. They're doing a fantastic job uh, piecing together uh, the puzzle of all this rock out here. And then our prospecting team is following up or um, the Vanguard in uh, many cases, and going out and identifying just what type of mineralization we have. So it's really important that we have all of these teams working together and we're developing these targets um, for drilling as fast as possible. And, and it's pretty impressive uh, what our teams have been able to do so far this year. Replacement style mineralization at Scarlet Valley. Um, can you elaborate just a little bit on that for us? Yep. Um, well, here's uh, what the hillside itself looks like, um, and I'll show some drill core photos here shortly, but you can see the drill trace of about the first 120 meters of this drill hole going through uh, just this intensely gaussinous, which ga gaussin is basically all this red and yellow staining. Um, that's oxidized sulfide minerals. Um, pretty much everywhere we find this yellow uh, mineralization or Gaussian on the surface, we're finding very intense replacement style mineralization. And what that means is that the hydrothermal fluids that were coming up through these rocks uh, actually altered and replaced the original rock with um, things like sulfide minerals, sulfur salt minerals, as well as um, intense amount of a silica replacement, which is a good sign we're in the core of a VMS system. So looking at these um, drill core right here, I'd say particularly uh, this one right here, uh, if we're talking about replacement style mineralization, you can see uh, that the rock has just kind of been eaten up along these fractures with these sulfide minerals, just kind of, you know, along these corrosion fronts, just replacing uh, the pre-existing um, or previously existing rock. Uh, so we're finding this not only within um, the andesite dike that seems to be exploiting the synvolcanic feeder structure, this VMS feeder structure um, that's supplying the hydrothermal fluids for the VMS, but we're also seeing it within favorable um, clastic or these debris flow horizons that have a lot of permeability and porosity for uh, these hydrothermal th the fluids to flow into and begin replacing the actual um, matrix or the ground mass um, within these rocks. So we're seeing, um, you know, as the press release mentions, about 95 meters within our first drill hole of intense replacement style mineralization as long as or as well as um, silica alteration and uh, all of these sulfides uh, have very strong uh, pathfinder element support uh, using the handheld XRF and by that I mean uh, very uh, robust silver numbers, anemone, and arsenic values that we're getting. So uh, we're very excited to see uh, what the assays from uh, these drill holes out here really look like. Uh, but based on the fact that we're actually seeing uh, visible sulfur salt minerals, which is a, a, um, a photo of that uh, an outcrop from the last uh, press release on this area, as well as Tarn Lake across the valley, pretty much the same thing. It's looking like there's a lot of widespread, um, potentially 
uh, precious metal bearing uh, sulfide mineralization all over the place out in this area. It's really quite fantastic. We'll go up to the uh, northeast, just about a kilometer from Scarlet Valley. Um, we've walked through this area and then there's a bit of a gap in mineralization between the two targets. However, they're both very similar and that they are um, really uh, close to these kind of feeder dikes that are exploiting the sin volcanic feeder structures at both of these areas. And uh, we've encountered again at Scarlet Ridge, very intense replacement style mineralization. Uh, I'll note that uh, they were seeing um, pronounced arsenic anomalies here at Scarlet um, Ridge. It's a, it's a bit different of a Pathfinder suite uh, that we're seeing compared to what we're seeing at Scarlet Valley, but it is robust um, arsenic anomalism, which is a, a good sign um, in a lot of VMS that uh, gold could be present uh, with these rocks. Um, in addition, uh, I'll note that we do have um, evidence that there is gold in the area and silver based on historic rock chip samples um, dating back to the early 1990s and stuff uh, that we've worked on um, over the past year indicating we do have gold and silver out here. So we're also encouraged about uh, what we're going to get in the assays from here. Um, so the drill core from this area is just phenomenal. Uh, to put it mildly, uh, we've got extremely intense replacement mineralization here at Scarlet Ridge. You know, in some cases, you know, I brought this rock home with me. Um, this rock it's about 40% sulfide. Um, you know, I mentioned this pearlitic texture. That's what's giving this rock this kind of psychedelic texture to it. It's just the fluids have flown th or through so much of these fractures that the rock's just been completely replaced in some spots. This The matrix in this rock is almost all replaced by sulfides. Um, these dark cores to this pearlitic uh, texture in here that is sulfide and then you see if you uh, zoom in on some of these photos in the press release that there's quite a bit of mineralization through all the fractures within these rocks so you know this stuff's really impressive um, haven't seen anything like it on the property so far and um, it's a very good sign that we're right in the core of a, a VMS system um, I'd also like to point out uh, this um, right here, that's actually a paleo seafloor horizon right there. Uh, we can see uh, that the sulfide replacement is intensifying as we approach the seafloor horizon uh, through here. You know, we're kind of going up um, towards our horizon through here, and it's just more and more sulfide as we're getting to that horizon, as well as um, seeing some stringer mineralization coming out into this mud. So if you imagine this is basically a debris pile of um, volcanic rocks with a mud layer deposited on top and then these hydrothermal fluids just um, permeated and penetrated this rock and precipitated more and more sulfide until you get to this kind of muddy seafloor layer and then those sulfides continued into that mudstone layer. So this is a very good bit of evidence that where we are at our what we call exhalative horizon. I do want to note that um, we care more about this subsea floor replacement style mineralization than the actual exhalative part because exhalative means the sulfides are just spewing off into the seawater and going nowhere. They're just gone. Uh, what we want to see is exactly what we're seeing here, these debris piles that are actually trapping these sulfides and forcing this type of sulfide replacement mineralization. That is exactly what we're looking for here. Um, that's what forms very large uh, VMS deposits is this um, subsea floor replacement. So we're, we're very excited to have um, actually seen very intense um, replacement style mineralization. It's just phenomenal out here. Yeah. Well, John, thank you so much for that update. Is there anything you'd like to add before uh, we let you go? Yep. Um, we've continuing to find more of this uh, sort of mineralization on the surface of uh, Tarn Lake here. Uh, you can see um, 
intense Gaussians again, more replacement style mineralization. Um, and you can see just how close it is to Scarlet Valley and Scarlet Knob actually across the glacier here. Um, we're getting really fantastic uh, XRF values and abundant uh, sulfo salt mineralization. So these pyrargyrite and freibergite are both silver bearing sulfo salts. We see it, um, it's ubiquitous out here within this mass of sulfide. So we are preparing to drill uh, these targets as well. And we'll be doing that here within the next couple of weeks. So we're keeping up the fast pace. We're still drilling at TV and um, we'll be returning to uh, the uh, Jeff um, 22, 118 and 123 pads to continue fleshing out the uh, polymetallic mineralization we found earlier in the season. Um, that stuff looks pretty good. And we're going to be returning to that as the weather forces us out of these high elevation targets. But right now things are progressing uh, on track and we will uh, more than likely exceed our 30,000 meter target. Thank you so much, John. And we look forward to hearing from you again in the future, the near future. Look forward to it. Thanks, Megan.